Greetings, Mason Storm here. On today's episode, we're going to look at making some mushroom ketchup. This is quite a bit different than your standard Americanized sugar ketchup, or sorry, tomato ketchup. So let's get started. I have one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper powder, some nutmeg, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a cup of vinegar, I'm using white pickling vinegar but you can use more mild stuff if you want, and of course we need our mushrooms. These have already been prepared and I'll show you the process to do that. So I have a couple tablespoons of salt and a rather large package of mushrooms. It was like 780 grams or something like that. So more than a pound, but not quite two, but two would probably be fine, nearly a kilogram. And what we're going to do is we're going to slice up our mushrooms into nice small pieces, and we're going to add our salt to them and then mix them around uh, for a good little bit and then leave them overnight. And that's going to draw all the juices out of the mushrooms. Now some things to note about this, if you're really want to wash your mushrooms, wash them and then dry them. You don't want to use wet mushrooms for this because you're just going to have the water from washing them and that doesn't really have the same kind of flavors. So if you wash them, dry them off, then do your whole process and then you'll be uh, all set for having fantastic mushroom ketchup. And here we are in the future. So I got my pot on the stove, we're going for a medium heat, we just want kind of a simmering action. And now we'll add our mushrooms. And as you can see, there is a lot of juices in these mushrooms. I didn't add any water to this. This just came out all on its own. It's just fantastic. I was able to draw out a lot of juices in the mushrooms, which is really good. And then from here, once we have all of our mushrooms in, we can add in our vinegar and our seasoning. I'm not gonna add in the nutmeg right away. I usually like to do that at the very end because you don't really want to cook down your nutmeg. And then once it gets to a rolling boil, watch your heat so it doesn't get too hot. Stir it occasionally. And before you know it, 15 minutes are going to go by. And then it's time to add in our nutmeg. I probably put in about half a teaspoon of it. It's pretty powerful stuff. You don't need to go ludicrously crazy with it. But if you do, I get it. And it's one of the greatest spices there is. It takes forever to grow though. And now we're going to take it off of the heat and we're going to get ready for our next step, which is going to be the filtering process. I'm just going to use some cheesecloth here inside the bowl and then pour everything into it. Being careful not to have the cheesecloth fall into the bowl because that would be unfortunate. If you don't have cheesecloth, just use some other type of uh, cloth that you're willing to use with uh, food. Something without a bunch of dyes in it because that would be unpleasant. And then we'll lift it all up and separate the juices. It's still really hot, so I kind of let it sit inside this other bowl here for, I don't know if it was like 20 minutes or so, but cooled off so I'm able to squeeze out more juice from the mushrooms. And I'm not done with these mushrooms yet though. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to dehydrate them because this makes a nice spice uh, for a lot of different things like you just take this you dry it out and then you can grind it into like a powder or use it kind of chunky and it, it's just really good it's a real nice uh, mushroom spice that and it would be uh, quite the waste just to toss it and I'm just going to dehydrate if you don't have a dehydrator throw her in the oven at a low temperature same kind of idea it's kind of like you're making beef jerky so no waste here in this process and now we're going to bottle our stuff up. I had this bottle boiling, so I was able to get the lid off of it and it kind of sterilizes it a little bit. It'd be better if my mushroom mix was boiling at this point in time, but I expect it to have a decent shelf life. I mean, it's vinegar and salt, so it should, uh, should last pretty good. But if you really want it to last a long time, boil your bottle, boil your mixture, boil your cap, and boil it all together and that should make it last a really long time. The other thing you can do is add horseradish in the final step here and that kind of acts as a little bit of a preservative as well but I'm not expecting this bottle to last that long. I'm going to use it up because it tastes so darn good. And uh, that's the end of this one. So let me know in the comments below how you make your mushroom ketchup or if you've ever heard of such a animal. I think this stuff is amazing. It doesn't taste anything like normal 
tomato American sugar ketchup but it's just got so much flavor in it and I bet you on a steak this stuff is amazing in fact once I'm done doing this video I might go down to the store and get a steak oh yeah yeah I think I'll do that so till next time stay awesome and like and subscribe